Hello everyone, good evening. Um, I am Fran, also go as the Sober Extrovert. That was quite an intro to follow. Um, first of all, I want to say a big thank you to BYOB uh, for this space and for the feature act tonight. Um, and first of all, I wanted to say that 2023 was hands down the best year of my life. Um, <laughs> uh, it was very challenging, um, but for two reasons it was the best. One, I found poetry, I reconnected with my creativity, um, and two, I decided to get sober. Um, and when I did both of those two things... <laughs> thank you. Um, when I did both of those two things together, um, I got back my thoughts and my feelings that I had previously numbed for so many years. Um, and my world dramatically opened up. Um, I, I'd say the hardest thing about change and transformation is the fact that you have to let a part of your old self go. Um, and that means that you have to change your behaviors and sadly, you have to let people go that are wrapped up in it along the way. Um, I'm two weeks back from a slip in my sobriety journey. And to be quite transparent with everyone here, I wasn't gonna come. I felt ashamed, I felt very disappointed in myself. Um, it was after almost 13 months um, sober. But then I thought about resilience and it's the very definition of not how many times you fall but how you get back up um, and how you manage your own adversities so I guess I'm here today standing back up um, and the piece I'm going to do for you is very very special to me um, in these rooms and at these events, you hear a lot about the struggles and commentaries on our society. One thing you don't hear is about addiction. You don't hear about alcohol dependence being spoke about openly, despite the fact that we have an alcohol dependence epidemic mm -hmm. in this country. Um, every, it's taboo to talk about, right? So I'm here to give this subject a platform. I'm here to give it a voice and to, yeah, I guess stand up in, in against adversity and I hope that it communicates and can help display a little bit of empathy for a subject that really, really requires it. Um, so it's called Dear Society. Hopefully my phone doesn't freeze on me because I didn't memorize it, it's quite long. I'll need your help for the first two stanzas of the poem. You're going to close your eyes for me. I'm going to get you to count to five. And once you've counted to five with your eyes closed, you can open them whenever you feel like, okay? Cool. It's, um, yeah, it's called Dear Society, and I wrote it about two months ago. Dear society, I suppose I don't look like an addict. So what does an addict look like to you? If you tell me your basis for judgment, I'll reveal the flaws of this limited view. I want you to picture an addict. Hold the image and count to five. Now tell me if the person you pictured, you feel is deserving of life. Did you imagine a crackhead? Or an old man with a can that can't stand? We have a preconceived bias of addicts, a narrative we don't seek to expand. I suppose I don't look like an addict. I'm not dirty 
or ugly enough. Addiction is a stereotypical group for contempt, yet it's a stigma created by us. Addiction is a brain imbalance. It affects the circuits for reward and control. It is clinically considered an illness, but self-infliction is the view we uphold. An alcoholic is disgusting, right? And is silenced by the mark of that brand. Let me ask you, if you had a problem, would you feel safe to put up your hand? You see, alcohol is a depressant, yet a social and glamorized habit. It's the only drug in the world we celebrate and have to explain why we choose not to have it. Alcoholics are embarrassing, right? But the words I don't drink, we judge in our mind. Yet we set, sit here and celebrate mindfulness, a contradiction of the ugliest kind. I knew I'd rather accept a label and be judged for its connotations than to spend my weekends blackout drunk under the illusion it's moderation. And no, I didn't drink every day. I'm sure you're surprised by this. There is a societal misconception of what alcohol dependence is. You see, we are encouraged to drink, even when it's too much. It's for fun and unwinding and emotional crutch. It's for birthdays and weddings when a loved one dies. It's for confidence and coping. It's the perfect disguise. It's for dinners and holidays. Come on, you've earned it. Hard week at work, have a drink, you deserve it. It's for date night and courage. It's hair of the dog. It's a constant reminder. Tonight, I won't drink a lot. It's romanticized pressure. Why on earth did you drive? Everyone's having a good time. I wish I felt more alive. That was such a good night. But how did I get home? Did I offend anyone? I can't look at my phone. You weren't that bad. Have a shot. Don't be boring. You only have a problem if you drink in the morning. <laughs> We're all out of wine. Who's going shop? I hate when you drink. Why can't you just stop? You look tired. Was it a late one? Do you drink on your own? It's 5 p.m. somewhere. One last round. Don't go home. It's Friday. Let your hair down. I shouldn't have stayed. I feel embarrassed and anxious. Now I'll feel awful for days. A line's what you need. It will even you out. You can kill yourself silently, but don't speak about it out loud. Did you have a problem? Come on, just have one. Why don't you drink? You're draining the fun. You can't give it up. What the hell are you thinking? You see, it's not just addicts that spend their lives drinking. And the worst part of all was when the penny dropped. A friend was ending our friendship unless my drinking stopped. When I first told her I'm sober, she said, oh my God, I'm so proud but her actions spoke different to the words said out loud. She's disappeared in the background. It doesn't make sense. 
turns out the better version of me is now a threat to her sense of self. I didn't know this was the price you pay to be free. I've lost most of my friends that were apparently with me for me. You see, I can't be dependent. I just need to drink less than them. But I can't stop forever. A worse fate to condemn. Addiction is lonely. And addicts suffer at the hands of this truth. There isn't a voice for its victims. So today, I make addiction's debut. It was delusion and chaos painted in glitter. It was rainbows and darkness wrapped up in a trigger. It was a reality distorted by a mask of deflection. It was to feel safe in a lie. It was the art of projection. It was a daughter, age 12, who slept next to whiskey and wine. It was learned behavior. Blackout drinking was fine. It was emotional abuse. It was internalized blame. It was seeking approval and finding solace in shame. It was hostels at 16. It was a broken heart. It was to sew up my scars and then rip them apart. It was my father who left. It was a lack of self-love. It was the feeling of abandonment. Why was I not enough? It was hell and I survived it to change the views in these seats, to provide a voice for those who aren't here to speak. On New Year's Day, I celebrated one year free. I'm standing here today in spite of that addict in me. You see, it was the addict you judge who fought back and said no. Her scars were the catalyst that enabled this me to grow. So dear society, is it the addict who's weak? Or do you deflect judgment for a truth you can't speak? Is your high horse your comfort? Is it not you, it's me? Or does your perspective spread poison on a cage you can't see? And lastly, dear society, please reconsider and think the next time you feel the need to ask, why don't you drink? Thank you. Boy, boy.